It's time for Twitter mean tweets about eHex, starting with Richard Hartz. Nah, I'm just kidding, guys. I do want to point out that even though it has changed in ratio from PHEX being uh, 1 to 4, now it's a 1 to 10 item, and uh, you know, it still has some use cases, and in the uh, big kerfluffle that's going on, I would like to take a minute to point out some of the use cases. So I had posted, uh, you know, a bit of a, a thread, if we want to call it that, earlier on X. But number one is the visibility. In the end, everybody who's not a real hexagon and who's not on Pulse Chain and who has no clue what's going on, they always see the hex ticker on Ethereum first. All the big sites have it listed, you know, except for maybe coin market crap or whatever. But pretty much, this is the ticker that people see. It is the lobby, the front door, the way you learn about it. It is the thing people watch. If you don't believe me, you could just look at like tweets by, you know, popular influencers on X. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't realize they're is, I guess now, what we're gonna call a migration towards PHEX. That's use case number one of EHEX. The chart's still there, it's the oldest chart. Use case number two, I believe it's kind of uh, an option on Ethereum, like a futures option. And so again, this is more a, you know, this ain't your average pleb kind of play. If you believe that one day Ethereum is going to fix its gas issues, what could happen one day is it becomes a viable item again. At that point, it would be realistic to think that it would increase in value. Now, if you really want to play the Ethereum update, this is, isn't the best way to do it. So a lot of people are like looking at, you know, GRT and Arweave and all these other things that might be used for future scaling and sharding purposes on the Ethereum chain. That's probably a better way to play it. You know, I'm not giving any kind of financial advice, but as for me, my hex bags are already there. It's gonna cost money to move them. I have stakes that are there till like 20, 32 or I, you know, whatever was 15 years from day one, I have stakes coming out. So, you know, this is a play that could be valid for me in that one day I might look and be like, hey, I can use this thing again. And then in that case, it, it will gain value back. So it, point two, it's a future options contract is one way you can look at it. Now, the third, item that I had listed was Hedron. Hedron gives eHex value. So we'll call it eHedron, just to not get it confused. But Alex, the creator, who's very smart and has come up with all kinds of awesome things you can do, like wrapping hex stakes and being able to sell them and you know being able to buy them if they're in default, you can take out loans against them and all these things. And the main way to use that ecosystem is through the Hedron token, and it also got forked into eHedron and pHedron. Now, just recently on Testnet, you know, he deployed some new contracts he's working on, so we don't know if they're successful or not, but apparently he's figured out a way in which you can use the two Hedrons uh, interchangeably and it's not going to matter. So that means if you do end up stake on your ETH uh, hex on that ETH system, you can move those Hedron through the bridge to Pulse Chain, and then you can use those Hedron to buy uh, stakes of P hex that are in default. And so you can literally unstake E hex and you don't even have to unstake it. This is the best part. So like right now, if I want to end a stake, you know, like ESS, I was, you know, just curious clicking around one of my stakes there, it's like 700 bucks today for me to, you know, end the stake.
But if I click mint hedron, it's like 12 bucks. So for 12 bucks, I can mint a giant stack of hedron, pay whatever $30 to transfer it across the bridge, and then potentially bid on all kinds of you know, default hex NFTs and increase my P hex bag. So harvesting Hedron is cheap. You could let your hex stake bleed out, but the day it was due, you could still mint your Hedron and get something useful on the other side. So at least for Hedron's sake, it's, you know, worth paying attention and checking out the gas prices. So Hedron is another massive use for eHex and why I'm, you know, again, just leaving everything alone there and not touching it. I'm not making any rash decisions. Now let's go to another use case and that is Communis. You know, this one, its argument is not as strong as Hedron. It's not as well developed, but you know what? It's still there and uh, it's providing value and you can still mint Communis. And again, it's pretty affordable to mint this uh, on your eHex stakes. There's very little liquidity there. I think as a community, we should all just, you know, use the nine inch decks on Ethereum and, you know, provide LP there or whatever. Personally, for Ethereum, I'm done with Uniswap. You know, I'm gonna, you know, use nine inch. And then personally on the Pulse Chain side, I like nine millimeter. Uh, so that's just me. And those are the DEXs I like. Now, again, Communis, there's some extra value hiding there. Don't forget about it. Look into it, at least see what the fees are if you got stakes coming to you. And if you're gonna mint an EHEC stake for some bizarre reason, you know, you got Communis there as well. So that's reason number four. Now, the other thing, that I would like to point out is it could be the new IOTA and I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek and what do I mean by that so when I started in crypto everybody had the narrative and I don't know where it came from but I just believed it because everybody said it back then was that IOTA is reverse correlated in comparison to the rest of the crypto market. Now, when I started in crypto, things were coming down off the highs of 2013 and you know, going into 2014, maybe IOTA was newer. For some reason it was pumping while everything else was getting trashed. And that was the narrative. IOTA is always gonna do the opposite. It turned out to be false, but you know, there's even a famous clip of Richard Hart talking about that's the reason why he bought a big bag of IOTA. And then he discovered that the stuff's dog shit, it's garbage, and whatever, he, I'm pretty sure he ended up dumping it. Meanwhile, he had a lot of trouble trying to dump it. I'll play that clip at the end because, you know, I just love that clip of Richard Hart talking about it. But EHEX could truly become the decorrelated asset in crypto that would function the opposite of Ethereum. And let me explain why this actually makes sense. So right now, Ethereum's in a bull. And as Ethereum goes up, eHex becomes harder and harder to use and nobody wants it. We can see right now, everyone's dumping the snot out of it. Okay, great. We know bull runs are only one year out of the four years in the crypto cycle. And then it's either neutral or down. And we know that usage on the blockchain dies heavily. And then when that happens, gas fees become more reasonable again. They go down, you can do things, things start functioning better. You know, like you can trade easier and move your positions to L2s and do all that good stuff during that quiet time. So I was thinking about this. I might let some of my stakes bleed out right now at the current price of eHex. I'm not willing to drop an ETH and a half to unstake. But while that's going on, all my future forward stakes that I'd made a long time ago, like they're collecting huge bonuses. And 
once gas fees go down, because in a year we won't be in a bull anymore, I'm sorry, we're just not. The bull's been around for like two months now, and so maybe we got 10 months left. And, you know, I realize, you know, for hex and some of those things, they tend to pump a little bit later. But on ETH, I, in a year's time, 12 months time, it's gonna start decreasing. So let's say in two years from now, I have stakes coming due. It's gonna be the local ETH bottom yet again. Well, will not I mint and, uh, you know, my EHEX? Sure. You know, the last time I unstaked, which was only about four months ago, I don't expect 50 bucks on Ethereum to end a multi-year stake. You know, I went in, manually set my gas fees really low, did it on a Saturday, took a whole day for the transaction to go through, but I got that transaction in on an empty block there somewhere. And, uh, you know, whatever. So I'm gonna do the same. You know what, when ETH gas fees go down, if I have stakes that are bleeding that still could be profitable or just stakes that weren't bleeding that are just happen to be coming due, I'm going to stake. And then I might restake some, but I'm gonna make sure that none of my future stakes on eHax are gonna be anywhere near the stupid having. You know what I mean? And it's not stupid, it's great, but I mean stupid in that it affects the fees in crypto. And so that means there will be liquidity appearing, you know, possibly, because I would definitely add LP in the bear when the fees are low. Um, so when all these things are going on, there will be an uptick, at least from me. And I don't know about you guys. I can't, I don't know what the rest of you clowns are doing out there. You know, some of you are real jeets just dumping the snot on everything. But, you know, anyways, like, if the value comes back during the bear into EHEX, it does what it does. So I think that's, you know, another use case, just straight up a fifth use case is it could be a reverse correlated asset, which means it still has ways to go down if that theory is true. The price of it's still gonna drop as things aren't working, but at some point it will hit bottom and then you'll have a cycle of use and then disuse and so on and so forth. So basically one year out of four EHEX will be broken going forward. Now, I want to point out, uh, Crypto Nate there had pointed out to me that trading the EHEX PHEX pair on Pulse Chain is a use case. I somewhat agree with him. I do. I don't think in and of itself it's a use case. However, you know, you can yield from it. Like right now on nine inch, you're making good gains with the PHEX, EHEX. Uh, on nine millimeter, I'm doing all right, doing some yield, uh, some gains with the wrap pulse versus EHEX. I had one that was set really low and you know, Basically, I'm getting a few bucks every day in, uh, in fees on 9mm. So, yeah, that is a use case. So I guess, you know, there is another use case in making it like a staking pool. For example, a while ago, you could get OG from single-sided staking uh, in the Grove. So that things like that are an option. There's, uh, you know, all kinds of little places you can tuck your e hacks and you can get some kind of whatever yield out of it if you wanted to. You know, I don't know if this is a joke, but uh, uh, the Zen community is allegedly going to, on their X1 chain, whenever that gets released, going to fork hex from Ethereum onto it. So allegedly, if you're an e-hex holder, you will get X-hex airdrop. Um, 
I don't know if it's true. This is just what, uh, you know, they're talking about over there. They're going to fork out the OA coins to make sure you can't get dumped on. Again, I have no idea if this is actually real, but there are tweets about it. So hope this video wasn't too long, but uh, these are different use cases of e-hacks that you could have going forward. Oh, straight, you keep running, sucker! And you tell that realty company that I ain't selling, you hear? We ain't gonna be terrorized!